Alrighty. <laughs> it's it's six o'clock, and it's lovely to see you all here tonight. So we, we might make a start. I don't think there's uh, too many more people out there. What a what a lovely day we've had. We've had a lovely morning at Sunday school, followed by. I think the most packed hall I've seen in Cumberland for a long, long time. I'm not sure that there was any spare chairs this morning. And we were running out of bread and wine. Um, and we had lots of young people here. And it was very, very exciting. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a really lovely morning, wasn't it? And tonight, we're going to uh, continue on with our, our bees on Bible reasoning, on the series of Bible reasoning. So I think if you might remember... A couple of weeks ago, uh, a brother Andrew did a night on Bible reasoning to the theme of money. And what we're really trying to do in this series as we run into the end of the year is to look at different topics in the Bible that we might call conscience issues. And we've asked the speakers to confidently present both sides of a story that might be a conscience issue so that... Um, so that if you're sitting in the audience, let's say, and, and we have the for or against uh, a certain topic, then the people who are sitting there in the for basket might think, yes, I agree with everything the speaker says. But then 10 minutes later, they might be starting to feel slightly uncomfortable and the people against might be thinking, yes, I agree with everything the speaker says, right? So we want to present all of the ideas that the Bible, that the Bible gives us and then draw some conclusions. And Brother Andrew did a fantastic job of that with money the other week, didn't he? He actually told us to go out and spend money. Which I think Auntie Claire was very excited about as well. <laughs> that was something I'd never come across before. So we've got a whole range of topics. Now, one of those topics that we want to look at tonight with Brother Sam Luke, and it was, it's not me that's doing it. That was, that was my, a mistake on my behalf. Um, I'm chairman tonight. But Brother Sam Luke has done with the Brighton Youth Group before a night on addictions. Um, And what we want to look at is is what addictions are and what the Bible says about addictions because there's a lot of topics that we we might take for granted are are right or wrong. We might have some general knowledge, but actually the Bible talks a lot about this sort of thing and can give us some really, really good guidance in our life. And that's what Brother Sam and, and Sister Lorna and Amos have come along to help us with tonight. Now... The word, um, the word addiction or addict or addicted, does anybody know how many times it appears in the Bible? Sorry? Once. Right, where is it? Very good, Auntie Rosie. On the ball. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 15. If you want to open up your Bibles, because we haven't got a reading tonight, open up your Bibles at 1 Corinthians 16. The word addicted appears once in the Bible that I can find. I'm not doing the talk. <laughs> First to Corinthians 15, verse 16. And he's 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 doing his um he's doing his greetings, alright? Paul is doing his greetings. I beseech you in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 15, I beseech you, brethren, and then in brackets, ye know the house of Stephanos, that is that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Now, that's a pretty good sort of addiction, isn't it? That's the sort of addiction that we want in our ecclesia. Addicted to the ministry of the saints. And and Uncle Stuart talked about um, the saints being all of us in this room, and we baptised brothers and sisters. Saints in preparation for the kingdom of God. Right, that's enough from me. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to... I'm going to open with prayer, And then Brother Sam's going to come up and get straight into it. And by the end of tonight, we haven't got a reading or hymns because we're going to have all these whiteboards filled with with notes. So I hope you've got your pencils and pens. So if you all want to rise, we'll open uh, with a prayer tonight. Almighty and loving, gracious Father in heaven, we come into your presence now because, because it is you who has 
created us and made us in your image and likeness. You have created our minds. You understand our minds that we are dust because we are your children and you understand us intimately. You understand that our minds can be inspired to greatness, but you also understand that our minds can be corrupted by impure things, things that cause addiction, things that cause our mind to waver in their focus and their attention on you and the thing and, and, and eternity. And we know, Father, that you can help us from these circumstances as well. And so as we come together tonight as an ecclesia to look at some of the challenges to our faith, to look at some of the things that can grab hold of us and, and pull us down, we ask for your blessing and for your wisdom to fill the words of Brother Sam tonight so that we can be encouraged to look at ourselves honestly and faithfully and make changes in our lives where we need to. And to go away and to become like that household of Stephanus, addicted to the ministry of our brothers and sisters in our ecclesia here and beyond. And so, our loving Father, we pray for your blessing upon tonight through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, we know that addictions um, can be challenging. We know that they can form uh, many different, they can come in many different disguises. And we know that they can take hold of our minds and, they, and, and we can find ourselves in the grip of them if we, if we let them. And so what we're going to do is invite our brother Sam up now and he's going to run us through his, his talk, uh, Bible reasoning and, and addictions. Thanks, brother Sam. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, good evening, everybody. Thankfully, Jamie's done my conclusion, so that should mean that that's five minutes less we have to do at the end, because we've covered the one passage in the Bible that talks positively about addictions. Um, you might think I'm addicted with all these whiteboards, which is a problem, uh, but let's just start tonight. I, uh, I do want to get straight into it. This was an hour and a half with Bright News Group, and I have tried to trim it down, but um, there's some... <laughs> Uh, let's put a definition up here of, of addiction. Uh, be continued. Let's go small case, so I can go faster that way. Okay, that's a long silence to start talking with, but uh, so it's a continued use, um, compulsive use of a drug or a behaviour despite harm to oneself and also the harm that it might, might um, and nearly always has on others and, and our relationships. So it's something that we keep on doing uh, even though we know it's not good for us um, and our mind blocks out the reality of the consequences um, the negative consequences of what's going to happen. So we often know this is the case. We know it's not going to be good for us, but the mind has these blockers uh, that, that make us enjoy what we're doing, so we keep on doing it, despite knowing that it's going to cause harm to ourselves. So um, I guess it's particularly this continued p compulsive, isn't it? And, and there's harm, despite the harm that's, that's involved. They're, they're the sort of key ingredients. Now. Um, there is a, psych, um, a physiological base to uh, addiction. Who knows uh, what the chemical is that's released in our brain that's related to addiction? Dopamine. dopamine. Okay. So dopamine's an interesting character. Um, so it's a neurotransmitter, actually, but it's, and it acts sort of like a hormone. Um, and what it's associated with, the reason it, it affects us is because it's associated in our mind with reward and with motivation. So, bing, the little dopamine spike makes us 
Uh, it, it, it makes us feel rewarded, like we've gained something, and it, and it drives, therefore, our motivation. Um, and therefore, because of this, we want to come back and we want to repeat whatever it is we've just done because of this little dopamine spike. Um, now, actually having the right amount of dopamine in your brain is a really important thing. So dopamine's not just all bad. It's important to have a stable, steady level, steady level of dopamine uh, in your brain. But things that are addictive stimulate dopamine more than just normal um, everyday activities, which are good to do, which we get a good feedback from, and therefore we do again, like we eat and we drink and we care for people, uh, we learn, we get out of bed, all of those things are good. And it's good that that puts a little bit of dopamine in our mind because then we keep repeating those processes. Um, but the problem is when we get spikes in dopamine. So we've got this standard level. We've got little Jimmy here, not any particular Jimmy, even though we've got our own special Jimmy. Um, and he's just trundling along with a standard level of dopamine. And then he has some chocolate. How much do you think his dopamine spikes when he reaches for a Hague's uh, truffle, in Lorna's case? Sorry? Fruit truffle, well, for me. But if you buy truffles for your wife's birthday when you know she doesn't like them but they're your favourite, Jimmy, I found out it doesn't spike the dopamine. What percentage rise do you think there is in dopamine when you have uh, chocolate for, for a normal person? You have a little spike. 10%? No, let's go 50%. It is 50%. So this is chocolate. Okay, what about nicotine? Come back to normal nicotine. A hundred and fifty percent. What about meth methamphetamines? A thousand percent. So excuse the scribble, but but it makes a point, doesn't it? This, this is why people go for, for drugs to get a high, because e even something like chocolate that we really enjoy has a relatively small effect on our dopamine levels. Uh, if you go for something like drugs, it spikes it massively. So, and what happens then is the bra brain then tries to rebalance. It goes, no, this is out of control. We need to pull this down. We need to turn off the receptors um, and reduce the sensibility of our receptors, the volume and the sensibility of our receptors to, to dopamine. We just need to pull all this back in, in control. And that's when we come down off our high, um, we experience a hangover or a craving. Now, if you hold off against that feeling of the brain trying to turn off those receptors and calm your dopamine levels down, you'll eventually level again here and you'll be happy enough with that. So it's, it is a matter of just holding out. Um, but the, the natural response of the body is to say, you know, whatever it was that gave me this high, I should do it again, because I feel so good when I do it. You know, the next, the next truffle feels as good as the last one, uh, almost. Um, but the more of these sort of spikes we have, the harder it is to enjoy just running along the flat here, just enjoying eating normal amounts of food and normal amounts of exercise and normal amounts of relationships with people and, and all the, the generally good things in life that do give you a, a dopamine um, burst. So this natural state gets upset by our experience of these unusually inflated states of dopamine. And so this is where it sort of plays in, you know, uh, academic though I am, I'm, I'm no expert on this subject, but all the uh, um, advertising and media people, they know about this sort of thing, whether they know it from a scientific point of view or just from a human experience point, point of view, they work on this, don't they? So they try to keep us on a treadmill of, of having these things, so, or not necessarily as bad as methamphet methamphetamines, but um, all the sorts of things that keep our attention on things that give us a dopamine spike. And if they can keep us on that treadmill, you and I are just going to keep on buying, experiencing and having it again and again and living up here somewhere. And then the body is always trying to pull you down, so you're always trying to go for more. Yeah? You, dull, you dull the receptors. So 
the idea here, just to start off tonight, is if you know why you respond to things, if we know that this is why we get hooked on things, then it helps us do something about it. And uh, this is an interesting subject. It's pretty broad in terms of what you might call an addiction, from things that we would say are fairly innocuous, right through to things that are really damaging and have long-term negative effects. And I think we're actually all addicted to something uh, to various levels. And, and maybe, you know, with our, our opening quote, as it turned out, to, to good things. You can be addicted. You can have people that just can't stop caring for the ecclesia and providing and inviting friends along and doing all those really good things as well. Um, a little while ago, I pulled off a prophecy app. And you think, oh, that's, that's not necessarily a good thing to do. But this prophecy app was, was bringing so many events to my mind and so many... Uh, bings going off. It was, uh, and I was really enjoying that because I, I, you know, they were good news sources and it was really interesting and relevant. But it got too much, and in the end, I decided before I did this talk that it was essentially an addiction for me, and I actually just had to get rid of that particular tro- prophecy line and just drop back in when I needed to to find out what was going on instead of finding out all day, every day, maybe 20 or 30 little messages uh, on this line each day. It was a bit overwhelming. Anyway, don't worry about my uh, strange addictions. Tonight, um, I think just, just try to focus on, on your own is really the, the goal of the night. What I'd like to do now is just to make this relevant. Um, let's work together on um, what addictions, what you might get addicted to. So open your mind a little bit now beyond the three things uh, that are on the board. What, what do you think you might get addicted to? What sort of things? Coffee. So caffeine, can I write caffeine? Ooh, is that the board or my pen? Might be the board? Okay. Can we read that up the back? Yep, yep good. Sugar. Cut. Sugar. It, sorry, social media. Fitness or, say, exercise, yeah? Sorry, going too fast for me. <laughs> Music? Sorry? Pornography. Pornography, yep. It's one of the big ones. Gaming. Gaming. Really? Yeah. Strange. That's really weird. <laughs> uh, can I just go entertainment? <laughs> Gum tree. So buying and selling, yeah? Totally. So it's good to work hard, isn't it? Uh, but there is such a thing as workaholism, where people just get addicted to work and that their whole life is, is consumed with their work. Sorry, Greg? Yeah, we're trying to list them out. Let's, let's put some of them actually... Stamp collecting. Stamp collecting. <laughs> Okay. I, I understand it. My dad collected stamps, strangely enough. Bike riding. Bike riding, yeah. Yep. And light crew. <laughs> Sorry? Gambling. 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 Have we not put that up already? No, that's great. Uh, we had buying, selling, and we had work. Let's do gambling in dollars here, Nath. Yep. Food. Food, yeah, for sure. I wonder how many programs the Romans had on cooking uh, in the arena. Sorry. Louise said medication. Yes. Yeah, medication, and you just have more and more and more. Even of. Sorry? 
Holidays? Yeah. Flying. Was that flying? L Y I N G. Sorry? Learning. Yeah, that's a good one. No, that's a that's a serious one. Seriously good and sorry? Marathon running. Uncle Kev. Did we, have we got sport up here? Yeah. Sorry, where's fitness and exercise? We've got to put sport there, don't we? It should be a category of its own, but... Okay, last few. What would we hear? Fashion. Whether it's obvious to other people or not. Um, reading. We had books. Oh, they've just said it a few times and I ignored them. Okay. Yeah, yep, that's... Okay. Okay, um, have we got drugs up there? We don't. Let's do recreation as final and leisure, general, yeah? Leisure activities. Okay, that's plenty. I think we get the idea. What we want to do now, and I'll be careful about this one. Of, of these ones we've got on the board here, which are never forevers? Which ones are never forever? Shouldn't do them. You've got to be really careful, scriptural. Pornography. Thanks, Moss. Someone had to be brave enough to say it. You just shouldn't do it. Drugs. Drugs. <coughs> yep. <laughs> well done, Mister. Exercise. Ah, very good. Gambling. Yeah. Now that probably tinkers with the. Uh, degree thing a, a little, but yep, I, I'm happy to put. Sorry? Yeah, see, that's where money probably just directly linked to gambling is not much good, eh? So let's just isolate money out here. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Lying, yep. Good plan. <coughs> Sorry? Marathons. Marathons. Okay, now we're getting humorous. Anything else there? Oh, I don't know if you could argue that's a never forever period one. Um, it definitely comes into tonight's subject very strongly, but not a never forever, I don't think. Sorry? Yeah. Recreational. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Take it off. Okay, good. Uh, that's really helpful uh, to look at it like that. Now, what we want to talk about next, I think the next most logical thing on board three is what are the principles of never forever? If, what are the principles behind, scriptural principles behind uh, or how would you determine that something's uh, never forever? What would the, the primary thing you'd, you'd look for to determine whether it's something you just shouldn't do? Sorry? That's an excellent one. I didn't have that as my first one, but... You sort of actually... So, sorry, let's just take this step at a time, because um, I want to just itemise these a little bit. So if we go harm to you, there's, um, yeah, now let's do harm to you. So this is the problem with interactive, you've got to 
can't necessarily stick to your own structure, but that's all right. Um, because, sorry? Yeah, absolutely. A direct commandment. That's what I really wanted to hear first. So you'd first look for a direct commandment from God, wouldn't you? Okay, so let's just start there for a few minutes. Direct commandments. Give me one on drinking or getting... Did we do getting drunk up here? Okay. So on my list, I had getting drunk. So let's just dodgy up the uh, results of the night and put that uh, in a little, little square of its own. What's, where's a direct command about uh, getting drunk? Sorry? Which says, Carlos? Yep, so it's included in the list of people that won't be in the kingdom of God. People that get drunk is included in a long list of people that won't be in the kingdom of God. So that's really direct. Um, can you think of any others? True, yes. Yep. Uh, so Titus. I'm just going to write elders because I don't have the reference. Yes, it is. It's a similar list to this one, isn't it? Yep. So, just to... Yep. In a way, Proverbs are full of the results of drunkenness, the uh, fallout. Yeah. The yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. It's actually really interesting for all the passages together on drinking. It gives a full kaleidoscope of God's view on the subject, which is really interesting. Uh, what about immorality? So, this is... It is. What's the one we teach the young people in the lesson of Joseph? Flee youthful lusts. Which is... Uh, I've, got first, I've got flee immorality, which is... First Corinthians six verse eighteen. That's good, because that highlights the excess, yeah? Good. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, so it gives some reason. Yep. Good. Thanks, Lee. Yep. So, and we often quote, what do we quote about our bodies in terms of some of these things? Sorry? Temple of the living God. So there's, there's not maybe a direct scripture that says, look after your body because you need to be healthy to serve God. But if you don't look after your body and your mind's degraded, which a lot of th these things affect, or your heart's drawn, then you're degrading your ability to serve God, aren't you? If, um, and it, it becomes physical, uh, or the physical becomes a problem as well. Which says, that, well, this is um, immorality. Yep, so look upon a woman to lust after her. Yep. Thanks. So um, I just want to leave that there for a moment. So this is just one category, uh, not just one category. It's the, it's the key one. What sort of harm to others might you might you get out of out of some of those things? Um, if your if your husband who strives to be like Christ, then if you're not being like Christ, you're directly going against the example that Christ has made for you. And so therefore. Bye lying or gambling or drugs or Anyone. any of those yeah. and therefore and, and therefore your relationship that Christ exhibited to the ecclesia of giving himself 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, and that, that, that's sort of one example of many, isn't it? So, your ability to be Christ to others. is compromised, yeah? What else, what other impact might it have on other people? So, It could be violent. Can I put that, yep, in that category? And then, sorry, bad example, yep, yep. You could lead, and you're saying that because you could lead them into sin, yeah? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. 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 The laws of Christ are, are soft on other people, aren't they? Except maybe we need to uh, redirect them. But largely, if you are like Christ, you'll be good to be around. Um, now, harm to you comes in a, a number of ways, doesn't it? It's, um, if I put dollars up there... Why would I do that? Yep, but what, why is it going to cause harm? Cost money. Cost money. Some of these things are really expensive, yeah? Um, and how do, uh, when, when you listen to the gambling uh, ads, what do they say about money? There's a little expression. Gamble responsibly, that's an oxymoron. Sorry? What are you going to lose? And the one that's caught my attention is, whose money are you spending? And what's the implication of that? Whose money are you spending, potentially? If it gets in trouble with the families, or worse? Or not worse, necessarily, but... It, it is God's? Yeah, something you've stolen. So it's, it, there is a natural connection between drug addiction, proper drug addiction, and, and thieving, isn't there, to feed that habit. It's expensive. And they pick that up, and that's why it's in the advertising. Whose money are you spending? Yeah. Yeah. So it has a whole cascade. So theft and neglect. So that affects both you and the family. Yeah. What a shame as well. Especially for the man for a while. Yeah. Yep, that's a really good point, Lee. Yep. And so then they don't want to come forward, they don't want to share it with anyone. They're just, yeah. Yep. The shame. Timothy? Yep. Yep. Rosie, what did you. So a seed conscience. So that's related to here, yeah? It's not the answer of a good conscience. It's a seared conscience. It's a huge loss of respect as well. That makes the person Yeah, yeah. Which is why people don't come out. Because they don't, they're embarrassed at where, where they've got to. Um, um, you sound like a business owner. <laughs> Um, so, but that's, yeah, that's, yeah that, that's a harm to both these, isn't it? Productivity um, to other people and, and to yourself. Yeah. So it's a never forget ever if it has a um, excessive physical cost on your, on your body, eh? Or an excessive uh, financial cost. Um, All right, so you wouldn't do it if it causes excessive harm to yourself in those ways, excessive harm to others. If there's a direct command from God, um, there's a few other categories. You wouldn't do it, you just wouldn't do it because there's, what, what else, who else do we answer to? 
Sorry? It's illegal, the law of the land. So if there's a direct law, which there is in, in regards to some of those things, um, related to sort of harm to yourself would be, um, and this is a fairly obvious one, a loss of control, of self control. Why do we need to stay in control of ourselves? The front half of the hall. Why do we need to stay in control of ourselves? Temperance. Temperance. Self-control. Self yep. Because I guess if, if you don't have self-control, anything could happen, couldn't it? So if you're properly drunk or properly drug-affected, or you've got yourself way down the chain of telling porkies to the point that you're really causing trouble, uh, you're not in control of yourself, and, and all of a sudden, life can spiral pretty badly out of control. Good. I think that... Um, oh, the other one I wanted to put down here, just since this is how would you determine it's a never forever, and the, 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 maybe the, one of the early ones should have been that there's a high risk of addiction. Yeah? So the higher the risk the more the alarm should go off in your brain that says, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. this it's too high. I'm not prepared to, to, to do it. Good. Now, there's, there's heaps of quotes that can go with that. Um, but I'm very happy that that board is satisfactorily full. Now, for the rest of these potential addictions here, these are matters of principle and degree, aren't they, and, and control. So... Um, what are the issues you, could, you should consider with, with those other um, concerns there? What, what are the issues for that? So this is, they're not necessarily all completely exclusive to this, but uh, as in exclusively different to this list, but what are the, what are the, the principles, the guiding um, issues around that you could, should consider in terms of things which are generally addictive but not um, diabolical like, or never forevers? Time. Time was the first one I had on my board. Yep. So let me just put a title here so you can see where we've gone. Uh, how decide never. That's how you decide never. And this is. We're going, to, we're going to call them conscience um, not issues. We'll call them conscience addictions just because of the context of our, or potential addictions, it should be, for our subject tonight. So time, time's a really important one. What do we say about time in relation to these issues? Yep. Prioritising. So uh, you, we've all pulled out the phone and intended to spend uh, just a few minutes reading a few news articles, and half an hour later, it's now 11:35, not 11:05, and you're still there. And and I or the person may have walked in the door thinking, I'll just have a quick, quick update, but I actually need sleep. It's late, early to work tomorrow. I need the sleep, and yet. Uh, so easy to bust half an hour, isn't it? I think we've pretty much all done that at some point. Uh, maybe not with uh, current events, but with something else. So um, you have to prioritise. You know, someone asks you to do a duty in ecclesial life and you say no. Um, we've all done that. Is it always because we're using our time pretty well? Uh, we're not lose we don't have much loss in downtime to these things in excessive sort of ways. Is that why we say no? Or, or is it because uh, in the end, this... Oops, sorry. We still feel um, like we're squeezed for time, but it's maybe not always for a particularly good reason. Maybe we should say yes, because our conscience should say, I've spent too much time doing, doing things which aren't important, and I should say yes. So prioritising is really important, isn't it? There's only 24 hours in a day still, and 
how many hours do you reckon you spend at work or school uh, for those that are uh, still getting educated or, or that have a job? Roughly how many hours do you reckon? Six. I wish. Eight? Eight on the job. An hour each way, maybe, on average? Yep. I said nine to 11, so, but I'm happy to go eight to 11. You might work from a home office. Okay, and what that just simply does is just sort of swipes half your day and it helps you realise that between that and sleep, time is, is restricted, isn't it? Um, I see Aaron there, his dad used to pound this into us mercilessly at School of Profits. Um, but you, I, do, I, know, I do this, like this is why I'm not good at time management, because I always think there's plenty of time. I see a whole day ahead of me, but actually there's not a whole day ahead of me. There's, there's meals, a few responsibilities, there's work and this and that. There's, there's a couple of hours ahead of me in the day, and that's what you've got to use for, for choice things versus what you have to do. Uncle Trev. Sure. Well, you have to do the work and you have to do the sleep, so you've got to choose how you use the others, yeah? Um, good. Thanks for that. Um, shopping. I guess uh, we've all fallen into this. It might be for motorbikes or for uh, clothes, um, just to you know, involve everyone. But do we shop with purpose? Um, my wife is quite amazing at shopping, at least for food shopping. Uh, she's back before... I can believe it, and that's because she has a list, and she buys what's on the list and comes home. And I'm always astounded that I feel like she's only just driven out the drive, and then she's walking in with the bags of um, food from the shops in no time at all, and I always admire that. Um, and the, the idea of shopping with purpose uh, means that you just use the time you need and you, you don't window shop too much. Um, gaming. Gaming can be... Um, Massively bad in effect. Do you, do you know that people literally die because of gaming? They, they get so, so much of this dopamine hit that they sub that for everything else that's essential. So they sub it literally 100% for sleep and 100% sometimes for food as well. And people have, have, are recorded in the last few years of literally having died because they cannot pull away from, the, from gaming. It's an astounding thing, isn't it? But it's just the dopamine effect. They're still feeling good at one level, like the dopamine's still getting spiked, uh, but they just can't pull away. Yeah. Yeah, that's a serious thing, isn't it? That you can end up then changing who you, who you are. Yeah. Yep. And we know that with online things. It's a... Uh, we've, we've probably all felt the sense that who you are online is who you can create that you want to be, whereas when I have to stand up here in front of you, I just am who I am pretty much, and you can see whether I've got grey hair down the side or not, whereas I can whip that away online or turn the other way or hide my receding hairline, whatever I'm going to do. But So online you create your image, and that's quite a dangerous thing to do, uh, or dangerous um, feeling that it generates in you um, in terms of, I guess, facing up to who you are. <laughs> now you really are standing like a business manager. Yeah. 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 We don't want to bag this entirely. Like I know what you mean, and I'm sure you do some of this as well. Um, but that is true. It's, um, it's what we learn about at Command Weekend, isn't it? It's about productivity. God's, the earth speaks to us of the productivity that God wants from us. If those trees represent us, like uh, Brother Simon said, then, then they're, they're providing shade, they're providing food, nutrition, everything. Yeah, good point. Tint. Yeah, that's an excellent quote. 
There's a series of expressions at the end there in 1 Corinthians, was that 10? Six. Is that right? Yeah. And 10, yeah. Yeah. Can you give thanks for it? Does it edify? Does it build up? Um, does it give glory to God? And one other, so I can't remember. Okay, so time is really important. I think the next one um, is, will it control my mind? How gripped am I by it? Um, so we, we know from, uh, if I write Deuteronomy 6, and don't tell you what verse I'm referring to, but in this context, will it control my mind? What's the worst verse in Deuteronomy 6 that would come to mind about uh, where your mind should be and what, what percentage of your mind God wants and of your heart? Uh, Sorry? <laughs> come on, girls. I think you need to do a revision with lollies next week, honey, Loren. Does it start with love? It does start with love. And we've got a song. Lord. You're God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Yeah, that one. Um, Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. God wants all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. It says, the Lord your God is one Lord and that Therefore, serve him with everything you've got, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. So God doesn't want something else controlling your mind and obsessing you and dragging you back to that one thing all the time, which is not about him. Um, there's a really excellent verse that I really like, and it's smack on where Cynthia just mentioned to us. So let's come across to 1 Corinthians 6. It's the second half of the verse that Cynthia was quoting, 6 verse 12. Cousin Phil, do you want to read that for us? 6 verse 12. Yep, 1 Corinthians 6 12. Yep. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of him. Now, I really like this expression because I think it really helps. I will not be, so the KJV. KJV says, I will not be brought under the power of any. Anyone got another translation? That's a bit long, uh, but I, I will not become... The slave, and I'll just abbreviate, uh, be brought under the power. Oh, no. Is that what it was? Sorry, what was the second half? I won't become a slave or, or be brought under its power. So that's very similar to KJV, so I'll just leave that. Um, no, I can't. Uh, the NIV says, NIV says, I won't be mastered by any. Uh, the ESV says, dominated. And the NET says, controlled. For brought under the power of, yeah? So Paul says, I understand... Like, this, this is actually completely relevant to this list. I understand that all of these things are lawful. We can do it. You know, in his case, it was meats offered to idols, wasn't it? And he said, I understand that there's nothing in the meat. Uh, all things are lawful in that sense, uh, but because he didn't believe in gods that you could offer things to, they were just pieces piece of stone. So whether you cooked your barbie on the stone or cooked it um, on your... Uh, in, in your kitchen at home made no difference to Paul in a, in a logical sense. Uh, but he didn't want to be brought under the power of any. And um, addictions can literally, you know, that's the whole idea of that dopamine uh, cycle, isn't it? And in the end, you want more and more. And your body's trying to pull it down, but you're going back for it again to, to boost it up. And so that cycle has control of you. 
So we need to stay free to act independently, don't we? Um, and I guess particularly, and we've had this highlighted in our community for a long time, to, to be independent of the media mo moguls. Um, they are there to get you to spend your money on uh, all these things, um, and they will take control of us as best we possibly can. So Colossians 3 verse 2 as well says, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. So, um, so will, it, will it take too much, you know, how much time will it take? Will it control my mind? Um, we'll come across here. This is promising to be on the last board, I'm sure you're thinking. Um, what about what harm, and we've seen this a little bit already tonight, um, could it cause? And here I'm particularly thinking of um, sort of mental harm, uh, social, uh, and, bot and sort of bodily. So mental harms are, um, you know, is in, in this case, these are, so these are not the nevers forevers, these are all those other things, but something like uh, violent movies or lust-filled movies or, or things that just play down that line can increase our, um, our desire, can't they, for, for violence or lust or uh, those sorts of things. And, and we've got to take, take control of those. Things can, uh, you know, God has, as we said, God's given our body for service. Um, so you don't want to harm your body, which, which you want to be able to use uh, in, in God's service. In, um, you know, we can become too tired. Um, we can become uninspired, can't we? Because um, our body's our body's weak, or it's it's out of condition, um, and we're unable to, to to use our talents as best we can for God. So that's a bit of an overlap. So I don't want to spend too long on that. You can think of sort of the social ones, and I just want to push on. Um, what about the example and effect on others? principle decide, helping us decide how much we're going to get involved in all those other things. Well, um, one, of, one of the interesting things, like if you read about addictions, you, you think personal, you think how do I feel about real estate, how do I feel about stamp collecting, um, planning my next bike ride, but in actual fact, addictions, if you think about them, and if you look at that list, is there, are there any on that list, and even if you just take out the worst ones, are there any on that list that have zero effect on other people once, once it becomes an addiction, you know, once it's a strong part of our life? Not really, eh? So I think it's true to say, and lo lots, of, lots of writings would say, that, that an addiction is never just a personal thing. It always has some effect on other people. So you may decide it's okay for you, but you may be bringing someone else into a bad habit. Um, and it may be one that whilst, you know, you are uh, got your little habit under control, you just go for a bike ride Thursday morning for half an hour. Um, for someone else, it may become a complete addiction um, in their life. At just, you know, as one of those examples of, of many there. I think a serious thing, we haven't talked much really about phones. Um, where do we have phones there? It's not there. That's why we haven't talked about it. Uh, I'm going to pop it up there, yeah? Oh, I guess we had social media, didn't we? So that sort of is one of the serious parts of having a phone. Um, internet, online, so that all comes into that. Um, we've all been in a conversation where we're halfway through talking to someone and you're really enjoying the conversation and they get a phone call or they get a text or something and the conversation dies. Um, and, you know, like, I don't get too terribly burdened by things like this because I'll just bounce on, on to the next person. But at times you can feel pretty lousy, can't you? 
because all of a sudden this personal relationship I've got with Jamie here that's standing talking to me, we're in the same room together, there's someone else or something else or something advertising in to him from outside, unrelated to where we are right now, that all of a sudden prioritises. Um, and, and I'm sure you've all had that at times. It's, it's hard not to, especially when you're waiting for something to come, not to get distracted. But um, it's not a good impact on other people, is it? It's, it is a really negative thing for relationships to um, be dominated by that. So if you ignore the friends that you're with, you can make them feel less valued. And Philippians 2 verse 4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things or the interests of others. So I think that that would come in as our final um, quote for the night on the far side there. Now, with five minutes to go, I thought this is roughly where we'd be, thankfully. Um... What I'd like to do is just run through some, some ways to overcome addictions because that's really uh, all we've tried to do here is make, make us aware of the fact that we, we're addictable, um, we're all fallible, um, whatever your, your vice is, all of, us, all of us are represented on this board, I'm pretty sure, uh, maybe mul- multiple times. How do you overcome addictions? Well, let's have a few things, have a look at a few um, key, key issues here. And this is, this is such a generic thing for problem solving in the world, isn't it? But, but it is, it's just the facts. If you keep on denying that there's an issue um, and you just don't see the issue at all, then you can't fix it. So you have to acknowledge that a problem exists uh, with yourself, but you might also have to acknowledge that you've created problems in your relationship. So you might think you've got it under control, but you might also be aware that it has caused trouble in relationships, and, and that should come into acknowledging that a problem exists. So make an accurate assessment of the situation. Um, is it a struggle, or could you stop? Could you go cold turkey tomorrow and feel fine? Um, try it. Try it tomorrow for, for your addiction. Just nothing, all day. Just go scorched earth policy, nothing, and see how you feel. Now, one thing I've really liked learning about is that and I mentioned this at the start, that if you can choke that thought, they reckon for only about four minutes um, when, it, when it raises, when, when that feeling comes that you want to overcome it, that in four minutes of no, the, the appeal or the desire for that dopamine uh, hit will, go, will start to dissipate. Obviously, you can have it resurrected, you can be reminded of it, all that sort of thing. Um, and it's not always going to be perhaps that easy, but in, in general, the idea is that it's not, it's not going to just keep on pounding you. Um, when the issue will arise and you do have an opportunity mentally to be able to say no and to overcome it if you just hold out for a while. So uh, being honest and practical about this, on the way home from work, it's a 45-minute drive. It's a long time to see. I'd love an iced coffee. And, and I've learned the four-minute rule. Well, I, I plagued myself with it uh, for, for love of my wife. Um, just to say, no, I'm not going to turn in the server and buy an iced coffee. It might be 45 minutes, but actually, I'll make one at home, or tea will probably pretty much be on the table. Just say no. Just, just say no for three or four minutes. And before I know it, it's not even in my mind, and I've driven all the way down the hills and coming to a happy wife who I don't have to tell any porkies to about what I had on the way home. Um, the second one is... Uh, this is related. You've got to want to solve your problem, okay? You've got to, for love of God, or for love of your relationships, or for bettering your ability to serve God, you want to be able to solve the problem. So Jesus said to the lame man at the pool of Bethesda, and, and we've often highlighted this in John 5 verse 6, he says, this is the ESV, do you want to be healed? And we go, well, funny question, isn't it? But he needed to reach out to Christ in faith and believe that Christ was able to heal him. Do you want to be healed? Third of seven points, just so you know where we're heading. Um, know yourself. Uh, know what you, what's your reasonable limit by self-reflection, by being honest with yourself. Um, no one intends to become an addict, do they? I've never heard of someone that, that was just happy to let it go, just to bear the consequences because caravanning is just the most amazing thing in the world, so I'm just going to bear the consequences of that. Yeah? 
It, it, no, no one chooses to be an addict um, in, in life, uh, despite, maybe that's come to mind because I'd like to buy a caravan. Um, maybe. Now, um, something I've realised too is that some people are, and, and the literature sort of talks about this, some people are more naturally addictive, and I haven't looked into why, uh, like, have more nat naturally addictive char um, characters. They just get onto something and they go with it. And probably, actually, when it comes to the flip side of our quote from Corinthians, that's an amazing thing, isn't it? We get that in ecclesial life. People that just always want to serve. They just, it's just who they are. They get on a on the train tracks and they go with it. Um, so bear with these people, don't get too um, uh, hoity-toity with them or, or, you know, just just bear with them because you may be someone that's a little bit more easygoing or not quite so focused and it might just not be um, your personality type that easily gets gripped by things to run with them, yeah? Just to be patient with each other. Um, as Jamie's mentioned, self-control is one of the uh, fruits of the Spirit. And Jesus said, not my will, but thine being done, thy, thy, thy will be done. So Jesus had a will. It, it was sometimes in conflict with God's his will, but he, he uh, gave in to God. So know yourself and have a zero tolerance uh, for things that you know you're going to have an issue with. The next one is to pray about it. Um, this seems invisible, but we believe in the invisible, don't we? We believe in the eternal and the unseen. Um, ask God to search you and try you, like that psalm in Psalm 139. Or Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So unload, unpack on God and, and ask for his help. There's that really graphic imagery is in there in 2 Corinthians 5 about the breaking down of strongholds. So there's these strongholds in your mind um, and the Word of God is able to, to dissolve them and pull the walls down brick by brick. Um, take, take the challenge up and, and have a go in prayer. And you can bring then every thought uh, into obedience to Christ. Um, I love this as a, as a life principle, Romans 12 verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That, that's probably my favourite ecclesial life principle. Um, so you, you, you don't want yourself or others to do this, well, provide something good to do instead, yeah? And do that in your life as well. So divert your attention. It's the parable of the seven devils, isn't it? Uh, cleaned out the house, uh, but didn't replace it with something good, and so devils, seven times more terrible, came back in again. And the end state was worse than the first, so you've got to uh, divert attention, say no to one, and have a life plan for the other. So, and there's so many things, like that's one of the rich things of ecclesial life, is that there are so many little things. It doesn't matter whether you're, um, whether you're a trade-orientated person and want to start fixing the hall or mending people's houses or fixing their gutters or, or whatever it is, um, right through to whether you're a, a purely academic person and you just want to share the gems of the word. And, and you've had some amazing people in your ecclesia that have done that. Uh, that, that just addict themselves to that and they're always able to provide uh, an answer to, to your questions. Hospitality, Bible study, being helpful at home, talking to your family um, and having positive replacement hobbies. One of the things they talk about uh, in line with this is, is use overwhelming force and I just like the idea, if you need two, 200 soldiers to mount this force against yourself, take 800. So <laughs> go above and beyond. If you really want to overcome things, then, then take it seriously um, and go at it with, with all that you can. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfil it in the lusts thereof. So change your playground, change your mates, whatever you have to do. Second to last one, confide in a good friend. Um, I do this. This is really helpful. Um, just to have, we call them accountability partners or whatever you want to. Just tell someone I'm struggling with this, lay it out, and say, this is, this is my plan, next Sunday come and talk to me about it. And, and I, I, I know next Sunday you will either not want to see them, uh, you'll either avoid them in the meeting, or you'll, it'll keep it on your mind during the week. You love them, you don't want to let them down, you've let them in to help you be an accountability partner, and now you want to um, answer to someone that you're still trying. Um, and as good friends then, receive that. Don't marginalise, condemn, help when someone calls out like that. They're in the right frame of mind, so you don't need a, 
uh, worry about condemning what they're doing. You need to pick them up and take them the next step. And the final one is to persist in faith. Uh, don't give up. Um, and I don't have time to go to it. If you're writing notes, which I know a lot of you are down the front here, which is fantastic. Proverbs 24, verse 16 to 18 says not to give up. So uh, I was going to conclude with a little quote about being addicted to the ministry, the House of Stephanus. That's a really beautiful concept, isn't it, that um, people should take this, um, this... I mean, it goes right back to the dopamine thing. In the end, you can have pleasure in doing the will of God, and they had addicted themselves to the ministry, and that's, that's a beautiful way to end tonight, I think. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. It's such a big topic, isn't it? And I think we've only really scratched the surface of a couple of, a, a couple of things there. And, and, and Uncle Sam, I call him Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam has only, only given us just a, a few little tips, hasn't he? A few little pearls of wisdom that have helped. Praying, um, I like that one about praying there. Praying out aloud really hands it over to God because it's not just in your mind and it can't just be ignored. It's actually words that are spoken that angels have heard, that the Lord Jesus Christ has heard that the Father in heaven has heard, they cannot be taken back. That holds us accountable. But I also love 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We dealt a lot with 1 Corinthians 6 tonight, but, but 2 Corinthians 6 is my catch-all for all of these things. It says, Ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, I will be their God and they shall be my people. If there's any conscience issue that we come across, anything, any one of these issues that we feel might be a bit of a burden or a struggle for us. The, God, the living God that is dwelling inside of us, what does the walls of our heart want to look like to him when he, looks out, when he looks out through our eyes, when he looks out through our heart? What is he looking at when he sees that? And I think that's really, really powerful. A really, really powerful to think about when we're making decisions. Um, in Ezekiel, when, he, when God told Ezekiel to dig through the walls and, and he saw all this imagery on the hearts of the people that was wicked and wicked and evil because inside their heart they were harbouring a temple to idolatry but we don't want to be like that we want to be harbouring a temple of the living God and he, and he says in verse 16 I will be your father unto you and you will be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty the Lord Almighty wants to dwell inside every single one of us and I love that imagery so that's, that's, that's really good thanks Sam for that, that talk tonight all right brothers and sisters if you'll rise we will close in prayer for um, our night and then for supper Almighty loving Father in heaven above, thou who inhabits eternity, but also who dwells with those who are of a humble and contrite heart. We know that you want to dwell in every single one of us. You want us to serve you with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength because you want to be our Father and you want us to become your children. And as we journey through life, there will be things that challenge us and things that we need to be held to account for. Our time and our resources and the way that we occupy our minds in the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, we pray, to fill our hearts and our minds with the wonderful word that you have given us so freely and, and so abundantly. To be addicted to the ministry of our brothers and sisters, in loving service, in the same way that you have lovingly created the earth, and in the same way that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has lovingly served the ecclesia by giving himself for it. And so, our Father, as we take, take this into our hearts and in our minds, may it be the good of those thoughts that overcomes the evil of this world in our hearts, that we, that we might glorify you in all that we do. Please bring your Son to this earth to set up the kingdom, to bring peace and to bring righteousness to your people, Israel. We know that they're under siege at the moment, but we know that ultimately the receiving of um, your people, Israel, and to, and to be reconciled to them once again will be peace to the whole earth. And we look forward to that time when your law will go forth from Jerusalem to change the hearts and the minds of all people unto you. And so, our Father, we thank you for the words that have been spoken tonight. Another little reminder of your great power. We thank you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.